What is going on everybody? Um, so this is a quick video tutorial on how to upgrade your Xbox 360 Slim hard drive, the internal drive, to 2 terabytes, which uh, is what I recommend to use on the 360 because I've had um, quite a few horror stories regarding drives that are bigger than 2 terabytes. Which, uh, there's really for technical reasons, um, you know, master boot record limitations and things like that. So, I won't really get into that here. This is more just kind of like a beginner tutorial. So you'll see here that I do have an existing internal drive. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna pretty much take apart the case, which I already did, pull the hard drive out. You see here, this is the case. Pretty much I had to pop the drive open with a pair of scissors. Uh, this is an aftermarket case, actually. So, uh, here's the old hard drive. So I just took the drive out and popped the new drive into the case here. And I'm gonna close up the, uh, the chassis for the hard drive. See, nice and close. So you see we have the SATA connector exposed. And now we're pretty much ready to just pop the hard drive into the console. So here we are with my 360 Slim. Literally just going to pop the drive into the console like I said. And then we just pop the uh, little case, the little shield or, you know, whatever you want to call it, the door for the hard drive bay. I'm try to do this with one hand <laughs> while I'm holding the camera. <laughs> And that's it, so now it's in. So let's go ahead and format the drive inside the console, which I found to be you know, pretty easy. There's other methods you can do to format the drive, but in this case, uh, I'm gonna format the drive inside the console and then create the uh, backwards compatibility partition. I'm not really gonna show you how to do the backwards compatibility partition. Honestly, uh, Modern Vintage Gamer released an amazing video on how to do this. So I would just recommend checking out his video, which I'll link in the, um, either the description or the cards. And there's me in the background there. <laughs> in the reflection. So here we are. Um, I do have an RGH chip installed. Big shout out to Mr. Mario 2011 for installing that for me, which I'll do a different video on that later on. So as you see here, we're going to be booting up to Aurora which is a fantastic piece of homebrew. Shout out to everyone involved with developing that. And here's just like an initial list of stuff I've installed on the internal memory card because the hard drive isn't available yet. So we're gonna go into our system preferences, uh, into the system settings, sorry. And from there, we're gonna go into storage. And then from there, if you successfully put, plugged in everything, you should have an unformatted drive. You click format, hit yes, and then it's going to ask you for your serial number, which you can find, you know, underneath the, uh, the little USB door on the front of your console. So once you put that in, it starts formatting. You know, this I think took like 10 minutes or something, I don't really remember. And there you go. Now you have a two terabyte internal hard drive. Um, obviously the partitions and the, the just the tech involved with hard drives will make it 1.8 terabytes. You know, as always with like any setup you do, it's never gonna be exactly the uh, amount of space that is built on the drive. And here we are. Um, we are in Aurora back again. I'm gonna show you that we now have HDD1 with 1.857 terabytes remaining. So yeah, from here I'm gonna pretty much just do the compatibility. Um, this is uh, the compatibility files now on my hard drive. 
after I uh, did the process. And I'm just going to test the backwards compatibility as well. And like I said, go check out Modern Vintage Gamer's video on how to do that. Um, pretty much I'm using the hacked back compat files, which shut off like the region check as well as the title ID check and just, you know, loads any Xbox game and attempts to run them inside the emulator. Some work really well, some of them have compatibility issues. Here we have Outrun 2, which if I remember correctly is one of the officially supported games. So I guess not the best test, but you know, just to show that it's booting. So, yeah. So that's pretty much it guys, it's really simple, so I hope uh, some of you find this video useful. Uh, this is just a hobby project for me, and yeah, as always, thanks for watching.